The 900-acre Beaconwood subdivision was built in 1972. The developer contracted with construction had no knowledge of the sinkholes and the cave system beneath the area. Most homeowners are still not aware of the fact that their houses are built above extensive underground river. Whereas others are quite excited about living close to a fossil-rich cave, promising adventure behind each corner. Some even had parts of the cave named after them. There has been lots of commotion in your yard recently. Divers walking up and down the street. Can you tell us what's happening? Well, we've, one day we met a bunch of uh, scuba divers over on Clock Tower. We were telling them about some water in the back of our house. The next thing you know, we asked them to come over. They did some underwater exp exploration and they came up with smiles bigger than a house because they said this whole area is filled with underwater caves and uh, they like to do some exploration. We said, sure, go right ahead and it's been a great time since then. So what have you learned from the divers who are diving off your property, basically off your backyard? Going out long distances underneath all these houses to finding uh, prehistoric bones, to connecting this uh, to my house, connecting to the Gulf area. And every time they've come up, it's something real interesting that uh, the whole family's been enjoying it. How about your neighbors? What do they think? I understand the association said no, so I said, it's okay with me. I let a few of the neighbors know about it, and they're real interested about everything. Every time uh, the divers leave, I've always talked to a few of them, and they want to know what new finds they have. How is all this diving and ongoing cave exploration affecting your family? But having a couple of young kids around here, it's like having the Discovery Channel in your backyard. I can see you guys holding the bones that divers brought up for you. What are they? Some of them were spines. Some of them were rib cages that were really interesting to look at to see how big they were compared to ours. When you grow up, would you like to become divers and scientists? Um, hmm. I would like to be an archaeologist, but I think I would because making these new discoveries, it's just cool every time you do it. The exploration of the system would be virtually abandoned for the next 15 years until an extreme drought of 1999 when the invisibility improved enough for the exploration to resume. Members of the Southeast Exploration Team started exploring passages to the south of Round Sink as well as to the north of Nexus in the fall of 1999. A deco ladder was built in the Round Sink to assist with the long decompression in often tannic and sulfur rich water. In May of 2000, during one of their dives north in the deep northwest tunnel, Al Heck and Alex Warren discovered 15-year-old line heading south from Stratomax Sink. The connection between north and south part of the Beacon Woods cave system was done. The Beacon Woods system had grown to an impressive 12,500 feet in a straight line stretching under a peaceful community of Beacon Woods. Wayne's World Sink is located in Hudson in Pasco County, Florida on approximately 15 acres of undeveloped land. The sink is approximately 1,500 feet east of the head of Cow Creek a saltwater, tidally influenced creek, and approximately 3,000 feet east of the Gulf of Mexico. The land that includes the sink is dotted by numerous water-filled sinks and depressions, and one small spring run typical of a karst setting. The water in the sinks and depressions is tannic from the degradation of organic material that is typical in a wetland environment. The immediate area surrounding the property containing the sink is residential and has numerous saltwater and brackish canals connecting the residences to the Gulf. The canals probably have also served to dewater many wetland and marshy areas so that they could be developed. As has been typical for many coastal areas of Florida that were developed prior to environmental concerns, the dewatering has over time lowered the hydraulic head of the Floridan aquifer, thereby increasing saltwater intrusion into the aquifer. Wayne's World, then called School Sink, was first explored by Michael and Sherry Garman, Michael Nevius, Tom Courtney, Wayne Hayes, and Mike Ward in 1995. Wayne, how did you find out about existence of this sink? Well, I grew up in this area. I, the elementary school right behind here, I went to school here and kind of grew up around here. So it was a place to swim and, you know, a place to hang out. Wayne's World, the sink has been named after you. How did it all happen? A friend of mine, Mickey Wiggerman, uh, looking for new places to dive, new cave systems. And we came across this and uh, basically jumped in there and looked around. Um, Took some time, you know, looking, exploring the first little area until we decided that we were in and a little bit too far, over our heads as far as 
uh, experience level goes. And we that's when we met up with Mike and Cherry, called them in, and uh, we started, you know, they started exploring, and we started just playing around the surface in the basin, looking around the area for, for other openings and stuff, and that's basically how it came about. The 2001-2002 exploration season had a single goal, find a connection to the southernmost tunnel in Wayne's World, which was pushed to 7,200 feet of penetration in the same season. The entire SEE team devoted all their time to the setups and exploration dives north of the Smokehouse Pond. The whole endeavor was made more difficult by the fact that the only accessible entrance to the system was Stratomax Sink. That created a logistical nightmare as divers had to travel additional 2,000 feet each way before starting their exploration dive. Brett, this is Wayne's World and you are one of the original explorers here. Uh, tell us how did it all start? In the end of 1995, uh, Wayne Hayes convinced two certified cave divers, Michael and Sherry Garman, that the uh, solution tube may be worth digging open. Uh, with the help of friends and other people, they managed to excavate the opening and started exploration, I believe at the end of 95 and 96. There was more than one team exploring this system. My last dive, uh, along with John, um, we were roughly at approximately 6,400 feet. And, uh, and Alex uh, Warren with the C team uh, made one dive after that, I believe, extended the exploration. And at that time, I believe we all came to the uh, understanding that the best thing to do would be to push from the Beacon Woods side, which is what he was working on. What does this connection mean for cave exploration? In the continental United States, once the traverse is accomplished, um, statistically, depending on the, the, uh, the connection, it could be the second longest traverse in the United States next to the uh, dismal Sherrill connection in Tallahassee. Brett, you are a very accomplished uh, cave explorer. What does it take to become one? Passion and desire. I don't know which comes first. The desire to do it and, uh, and the passion to keep on doing it. You know, desire is a wonderful thing, but unless you're passionate about it, you won't keep coming back. To traverse Smokehouse Pond, divers must ascend to three feet. So the entire decompression has to be carried out at the north side of Smokehouse Pond before 2,000 foot traverse back to Stratomax. All deco gases, including O2, has to be ferried over to Smokehouse Pond. It was common for each setup diver and explorer to travel with five to six stages and one to two scooters through low and silty passages between Stratomax and Smokehouse Pond. During these trips, the briar restriction and golf ball restriction bypasses were discovered out of necessity. It was impossible to effectively move through these restrictions without remo removing some of the gear or getting entangled. Normoxic Trimix was used for the exploration dives as the depth of the passages approaches 150 feet. How was your dive, Jose? Excellent. Where did you go? I went to the, I went 2,500 feet in to the beyond. As a new member of Southeast Exploration Team, how do you like it so far? I like it a lot. I'm learning something new on every dive and I feel I'm very much an active player on every discovery. What do you find to be the most difficult when diving with the team? So far the most challenging part of diving with the team is actually managing the equipment necessary for the uh, complexity of these dives. How do you see your future in cave diving? In the future I'm hoping to become an exploration diver. Many leads were attempted during initial stages of exploration season, but a big break came when Alex Warren pushed a low and silty Hope Tunnel through the crawl space, a 150 foot long restriction previously thought impassable. Behind it lay the first clear room, a room filled with cobalt blue water a welcome break from the two to five foot visibility in the Hope Tunnel. What did you do, Bryce? I went past the... Um, past the salt dip. How far did you get? It's hard to estimate because there's no increment markers back there, but I, I would estimate I swim another probably Close to 600 feet to 800 feet, maybe. Plus, back in there at a certain point where it, it levels out to about 110 feet, just a little 
real short swim past it. There's a lot of bones on the floor back there. A lot of rib bones and stuff. Alex Warren and Andy Conine took turns pushing the passage, finding more and more clear rooms, until all the leads seemed to pinch out at 4,400 feet of penetration. Was this another dead end? If so, the season was almost over, and there would not be enough time to explore another passage. The connection to Wayne's World system would escape again. Andy, you've been instrumental in making the Beacon Woods Wayne's World connection. Tell us what does it take? It takes determination and planning to overcome the conditions in these caves. The viz is poor in all but a few passages. There is a great deal of saltwater intrusion and heliclines are the norm. Also you must always be prepared for a spring to become a siphon due to the tidal influence. What do you consider your greatest achievement as an exploration diver? I feel that any achievements are shared by the team as a whole. I was fortunate to be able to explore some new passage in Lysen Line, but this was only possible through the support of my teammates. There seemed to be another lead from Andy's room at 3,000 feet of penetration, the last low restriction leading out of that room. A new attempt was planned for the next weekend, one of the last in the season, before the rains would reduce the visibility to zero in the entire system. That attempt yielded 1,700 feet of new passage going almost directly north in two dives that weekend. On May 4, 2002, the new lead turned to be a going passage, and in less than 500 feet, Alex spotted a familiar line. It was a Wayne's World South Tunnel Exploration Line. Beacon Woods and Wayne's World cave systems were connected, making it one of the longest underwater caves in the U.S. Tying these two caves together means having a second longest underwater passage in the U.S. Did you achieve your ultimate goal? No, it wasn't really a goal. Expanding our exploration of Beacon Woods cave system is an ongoing process. We have been working on it for the last three years. This achievement was only made possible through hard work, dedication and perseverance of all team members. What are the greatest obstacles that underwater exploration projects are facing? Landowner relationships are in the forefront of our attention. Inability of gaining access to the most advantageous windows in any cave system usually translates into long travels and extensive decompression. Getting through to and educating public officials has been a much greater challenge than anything the cave has been throwing at us. What are the Southeast Exploration Team's plans for the near future? Connection to the Gulf of Mexico and expansion of the cave system to include many new inland sinks will be our agenda for the future. I think we can accomplish this with strong and growing team. The Traverse Dive, scheduled for June 2, 2002, from Wayne's World to Smokehouse Pond, will be just under 12,000 feet. This would be just shorter than the Big Dismal to Cheryl Traverse in the Woodville Cars Plane. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. I've been told there'll be more in the future, and I personally would like to wish good luck and safe diving to all those involved in the project.